Hello and welcome back to IGCSE and All-Level Computer Science. We're looking at a past paper, paper two from October, November 2023. But I'm only focusing on the 15 mark coding question at the very end of the paper. Okay, remember paper two is an hour and 45 minutes. The total marks are 75. We're only going to focus on the part that um, students consider to be the hardest part and that's a 15 mark question. Okay, there are another 60 marks in paper two. We're gonna focus on the last question, the coding question. So here we go, 15 mark coding question. I'll read it to you. Drama students put on a performance of a play for one evening. Seats in a small theater, such as this one, can be booked for this performance. The theater has 10 rows, you see here, and 20 seats in each row. The status of the seat booking for the evening is held in the two-dimensional 2D Boolean array called evening. Each element contains false if the seating is available and true if the seat is booked. Up to and including four seats can be booked at any one time. Seats are allocated in order from those available. A row of seat numbers cannot be requested. So I couldn't pick if the theatre was empty, it would pick the next consecutive seat. So it would start, if, if this is the row A1, it would go A1, 2, 3, 4. And then if somebody else booked, it would go A5, 6, 7, 8, or however many seats were booked. So it would fill up from the front and carry on until it's full after it gets to the back. The array evening has already been set up and some data has been stored. In the Python code, I have set up some test data for this. Write a program that meets the following requirements. Counts and outputs the number of seats already booked for the evening. Allows the user to input the number of seats required, up to four. Validates the input. This is important, probably the hardest bet. Checks if enough seats are available. If, there are avail if they are available, change the status of the seats. Outputs the row number and seat number for each seat booked. If they are not available, output a message giving the number of seats left or house full if the theater is fully booked. Okay, you must use pseudocode or program code and add comments to explain how your codes work. Um, you do not need to declare the, any arrays or variables. You may assume that this has already been done. You do not need to initialize the data in the array evening. Okay, um, all inputs and outputs must con contain suitable messages. So let's break down the problem. We're going to be counting the booked seats. We need to iterate or loop through, through the 2D array evening and count the number of seats that are already booked, i.e. where the value is true. We then need to input validation. We need to ensure that the user input for the number of seats re um, required is valid. It should be positive integer less or equal to four. Okay, from one, two, three, or four. Checking availability. We need to check if the requested number of seats are available in consecutive order. This means we need to iterate through the 2D array to find consecutive false values indicating available seats. Okay. Um, because there's four seats next to each other, they're not scattered around. We don't need to go searching through the array for available seats. It's just blocks of four. Okay. Or if there are four available, if people are booking four seats, um, in the next available row where the last um, last booked seats were entered. Booking the seats. If enough consecutive seats are available, we need to update the corresponding elements in the evening array to true to mark them as booked. We also need to output the row number and the seat number for each booked seat. And then we've got some output messages. Depending on the outcome of the availability check, we need to output messages indicating either successful booking with seat details or a message indicating if there are not enough seats available or if the theater is fully booked. Okay, so let's start with the first bit, counting booked seats. Okay, so what I've done here, I've created a function. Yeah, a function to count the booked seats. See, I've cut and I've commented all the way through uh, my code. So function count book seats, this is the name of the function, um, and we're using the array evening. Okay, we set the count to zero, and then we're gonna loop through each row in the evening array. For each row in evening, count plus equals sum row, and return the count. So count how many seats in the row are booked, have a true value. 
So what is this thing? What's plus and equals to? What are we doing in terms of row? So let's break this down. Row represents a single row of seats in the theater. Sum row calculates the sum of all the elements in the row. In the context of this problem, each element in the row represents whether a seat is booked, true, or not booked, false. If an element in the row is true, it means a seat is booked, so we want to count it. So using this, count plus equals sum row adds the sum of book seats in the current row to the overall count of book seats. Okay? Okay, I've skipped part two because we don't need to worry about validation just yet, but I'm going to check the availability. So as we said before, we need to check if the requested number of seats are available in consecutive order. So for this, the function to check if consecutive seats are available. We've created a function, okay? Function check availability. And we've got evening and seats required. This line defines a function named check availability, as you can see here, that takes two arguments, takes evening, which represents the array, of course, of seats, basically what's in the array at that moment in time, and seats required, which indicates the number of consecutive seats required. Okay, so that's what the function's doing. And then there's going to be a loop, a for loop, a loop through each row in the evening array. Okay, so for row index from 0 to length evening minus 1. Well, what does that mean? So, yeah, this line starts a loop that iterates, loops around over each row in the evening array. Yeah. Length evening, yeah, returns the total number of rows in the evening array. But we know there are 10 rows of 20 seats. The loop runs from index 0 to the index in the last row in the array, which is one less than the total length of the array. Okay, that's why I've put a minus one in there. And then we're gonna loop through each seat in each of those rows. Yeah, so for seat index from zero to the length evening row index, yeah, seats required, that's what we're talking here. Inside the outer loop, this line starts another loop that iterates over each seat in the current term, um, in the current row. So this is what this is here, length evening um, row index, okay, returns a total number of seats in the current row. The loop runs from zero to the index of the last seat in the row, minus seats required, where there are enough seats remaining to accommodate the required number of consecutive seats, okay? So, all this is starting to make sense. Got some more parts though. If all seats from seat index to seat index plus seats required, yeah, minus one are false, okay? This line checks if the required number of consecutive seats started from seat index in the current row are all false. So it's checking the availability again um, to see whether they're available or not. Yeah, return row uh, index, seat index. If a suitable set of consecutive seats is found, the function returns the index of the row, row index, and the index of the starting seat, basically wherever, which seat, starts as being, as being free um, in that particular row. Okay, so that's how that one works there. Finally, return none. If no suitable set of consecutive seats is found after checking all the rows and seats, the function returns none, um, indicating that the required seats are not available. So the next one, we've got another function for booking the seats, step four. Yeah, if enough consecutive seats are available, we need to update the corresponding element in the evening array to true to mark that they have been booked. So off we go again. I've got, I'm using function book seats and I'm using evening, the array, yeah, I'm using row, the index of the row where the, where the booking starts, the start seat, the first seat which, were, which is available to us, and the seats required, i.e. how many seats, one, two, three, or four seats. Okay, is what I'm going to be using here. Then we're going to loop through the consecutive seats to be booked. So for I from O to seats required, minus one, this line starts a loop that iterates seats required a number of times, starting from zero and ending with the seats required minus one. Okay, this loop will iterate through each of the consecutive seats that needs to be booked. Okay, so if we put four seats in, we, want, we require four seats, if we start from zero, we'd end up with five seats. So that's why I've got minus one. So it'd be zero, one, two, three would be our four seats. Okay. And then this bottom line here, 
evening row start seat plus I equals true. So inside this loop here, inside the for loop we we're just talking about, this line updates the status of the seat at position start seat, yeah, plus I in the row of the evening of the evening array to true. So it's, it's basically um, setting them all, all the seats that have just been booked through a true state, okay? Indicating that these seats have been booked. Okay, so it'll gone from false to true. Okay, and then we've got the main program. A function called main, we're gonna print a welcome message to the theater booking system. We're gonna print the number of seats already been, that have been booked. Okay, so it's gonna count the booked seats in the evening array. Um, and then while true, print enter the number of seats you'd like to book, i.e. 1 to 4. So this is the main program function, and it's going to call on all the other functions we've created. It starts by printing a welcome message, I've just said, yeah, and shows how many seats have already been booked. It then, ent it then enters a loop to validate the user's input for the number of seats required. This is our validation check, okay? After validating the input, check whether or not somebody's put in the number one, two, three, or four. After validating it, it checks if these consecutive seats are available using the check availability, which I've just talked about, that function. If the seats are available, it books the seats using the book seat function and prints a success message. If no consecutive seats are available or the theater is fully booked, it prints a corresponding message. This is the first part of main. Okay, so this is what we're talking, these are the first two lines, yeah? The welcome message and the please enter your number of seats. Okay, but once we've, once the person's put this in, we're gonna use a try and accept. So seats required, we're gonna convert this to an integer. So make sure that whatever somebody types in it, it is the program sees it as an integer. If seats required sits between one, so equal to or greater than one, and less than or equal to four, then it breaks and it continues with the next part of the of the function. Else, it's gonna print, this is our validation, it's gonna print invalid input, please enter between one and four, or invalid input, please enter a valid integer. So that's while that is true, okay? It's gonna keep doing that and keep doing that until it breaks out of that because somebody's entered one, two, three, or four, okay? Then, so I've just posted that in, in here, look, I hope you can see this. Check if the consecutive seats are available, okay? Available seat equals check availability using evening and seats required. If the available seat is, is um, not none, so row start seat equals available seat. Okay, so I've popped that in there. So this is what we've got. We've got the first part, then we're checking the seats if they're available and then I've moved on to something called book the seat. This little comment here, book the seat. So book seat, we're using again, evening row, start seat, seats required, print seats book successfully. And then I've got a message here. Yeah, seats book successfully, row, whichever row they were in. Okay, seats, start seat two, start seat plus seats required. Else, we're gonna print a message. Sorry, there's not enough consecutive seats available or the theater is fully booked. Rather than doing two separate messages, I've just combined these two here. So it's either fully booked or it's basically the same thing. You can't, there's, there's, no, there's no available seating for the show tonight. Okay, so this is my main program, the one that runs, I've just gone through, the main program. I'm using pseudocode.net to, to write all this. And we've got a little bit of problem with the, um, with the color formatting, as you can see. That's why I've switched to something else. And that's why it was yellow previously for some of these comments. But basically that's my, that's my function main. And all I do is call main. Okay, we use, remember it's pseudocode, so I'm just gonna call main, okay? To call this main function, okay? And I say this sits after the other functions that I've created, okay? If I switch to Python, I've just defined my constants here. To, I've defined a function called count book seats, and we're using the evening array. I've not declared the evening array because it said in the um, in the question that that was already declared. Um, book seats equals sum row dot count true for row in evening. So it's going to count the book seats and it's going to return the book seats. Okay. 
Then I've got function to display the theater seating chart. This is something I've created that's not part of this code, but it looks quite nice in Python. So if you're confident with sort of drawing tables and images in Python, it might be quite nice. It just shows that you understand what you, what you were doing. Okay. So, and I've defined the book seats as before, similar to the pseudo code. Yeah. And else there's not enough seats. Okay. Print the house is full. Yeah. Else print there are some seats left. So this is what I was talking about. The populate test data. I've just populated 20 um, seats starting with the first row, row zero, as you can see the first seat in the row zero zero and then zero one. Okay. And then the, the next row, we've got the third seat taken up, as you can see here, zero, one, two. So that's my little seating chart. Okay. And then my main program is here. So this is the program. This is the code. And I'm going to run it in a moment. But I've just created a little with file.io. This, this is available for download if you want it. There's also a, a QR code you can scan there to, to get this link. Okay. So let's run the code. And I'll show you what happens. I've opened up idle. Here is the Python code I've, I've just shown you. So I've got my functions in place here, the three functions for counting the book seats, for displaying the seating charts, and for defining the book seats. I've also got my little um, test here with my test data in it for all the seats that have, that have been pre-booked. There's 20 seats that have been pre-booked already. And then I've got my main program underneath. So if I run this now, run the module, as you can see, 20 seats have been booked. Seating chart, I've created a little seating chart here. Yep, but what will happen when we book a seat, and we're talking about consecutive seating. So if I book an additional four seats, yeah, it will book them after those first two. And it will continue to do that and fill up the rows. It's only maybe when we get to here, if we wanted to book four and we've got two there, it would skip, or we would want it to skip and book these here. Okay, because it's got to book consecutive seats. So by, by doing that, I'm mind to throw a spanner in the works in terms of where people can sit. Okay, but what it does as well, it totals up. So now the number of seats here is 24 and there are 176 available. So that is it for Python. As I said to you before, this is available for download and the link will be in the description below. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.